Wasn't that fine singing? I'm telling you, that was great. Praise the Lord. We're glad to have Tony Williamson with us today. And he's from Covington, Kentucky. And he attends the Crescent Springs Baptist Church there. And uh, we're glad to have him. Tony, where are you? Would you stand up? Hey, good to have you this morning. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Did I say him? I was talking about a song. And you, know, <laughs> you never know names nowadays, you know. Uh, anyone have a name like Rumpelstiltskin, they love to name anybody, anything. Boy, it's good to see all of you. God bless you. appreciate you so much. The Christmas time, just a great time to be with people and be at the Lord, which it always is. And good time to be in church. And we're so glad to be here this morning. And uh, as I say, get my age, you're glad to be anywhere. <clears throat> but the most special place is the house of God. Appreciate all of you. The other Sunday, I mentioned Tommy Henderson's restaurant at the bottom of the hill. I forgot to tell you, they got old-fashioned hand-dipped ice cream. They just reach in there and you got, no. They got a scoop they, they get it out with. But I guarantee you, it'll melt in your mouth. That's how good it is. So good to have Tommy and his dad with us. Appreciate them. And uh, appreciate all of you. If you haven't been here in a while, we're glad to have you back. And Tony, we're glad you come to be with us today all the way from Covington, Kentucky. That's down Double A Highway, somewhere down in there. <clears throat> so it's good to see you. Um, you know, when you're growing up, when you're young, you think you know more than what you do. And... Uh, you know, you kind of get a little job of prestige or something. People handle it wrong. And you don't want to do that. Because when you're about 16 years old, your mom and dad's a lot smarter than what you think they are. And when you get up a little older, you find you're surprised how much they learned over those two or three years. But this young one fella, he's got a job. and He come up to this farmhouse. The man was sitting on the porch. Good example. He got out and come up and said, I'm the new district game warden. and said, I want to look over your farm. He said, okay, that's fine. Uh, but he said, now there's one field back there. You better not go in. Well, he pulled out a card and kind of got hefty. He said, I got this card. I can go anywhere I want to and nothing can stop me. He said, oh, okay. Go ahead. So after a little bit, he's sitting there and he saw the dust rolling up. And, and this man a hollering and screaming and running. He got up and looked, and that old mean bull was chasing his game warden. <laughs> He's hollering at this man, help me. He says, show him your card. <laughs> <laughs> so humility is so valuable, you know. <clears throat> you got it, stick with it. If you don't have it, get it. It'll get you through life. And sometimes you can be wrong. God bless you all if you have your Bibles today. Turn with me and pray for me. At the, the general epistle of James, I want to read from the first verse and the first chapter and the 18th verse. And, uh, and you pray for us. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be, kind, be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. This is talking about Jesus Christ. By his own will, he begat us. Now, all of us in here were begotten by somebody. Everybody's got a father. And if that's all there was to it, there wouldn't be much to shout about, would there? But we were begotten by a bloodline that was filled with iniquity and filled with sin. But then a way came by where we can have a bloodline that's filled with royal blood that knew no sin, that never sinned, no guile was found in his mouth. And if we want to be the first fruits, and that's what Jesus wanted us to be. <clears throat> now, people in sin today are not the first fruits of this experience. Now, the only way you can get this experience is the same way you got in the world the first time. You had to be born. 
I understand they're supposed to make a sheep, another sheep, and all that nonsense and wasting her time and money. God wanted a sheep. He just said, here's a bunch of sheep. Adam, you're going to take care of them. God wanted a bunch of goats. He said, Adam, here's the goats. You take care of them. Adam stood there and named all the creatures that God created. And how many names there must have been that probably we don't even know about today. But then there come another day, another birth, another time in Bethlehem of Judea, if you see where I'm going, that God wanted creatures that had the royal blood in them flowing through the cross of Jesus Christ, which is those of us that have been born again. Now, as we all know, Mary was a virgin. Now, you cannot get to heaven today without believing in the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. You just can't get there without believing that. I talked to an old Korean man when I was in Korea and talked to him about the Bible and so on. And he wasn't harsh or cold or anything, but he said, I just cannot believe I just cannot believe that Jesus was born that way. Well, if you don't believe that, you cannot go to heaven. Now, here's something you can. You may not understand it, but you can go to heaven. But if you don't believe it, there's no way you can be regenerated or born into a new creature of Christ Jesus. Now, you know when a baby is born, we all rejoice. And, uh, I know that uh, Kathleen just became a, another grandma and and uh, usually, uh, Marlene is sitting down here with her baby, about a month old now. And we all pass it around, and everybody looks at it. That is the birth that God gives to everybody. But then there's another birth God wants to give to everybody that folks will not accept. Will far exceed and outweigh that first birth that you had. And there's more people rejoicing in that second birth than there is the first. Back when I was born, there wasn't anybody around. Just my brothers and sisters, and I was the youngest of 12. Now, I don't know if my mom and dad was rejoicing too much or not. Is in the middle of the Depression, and probably the last thing they needed was another child to come in the world. But praise God, I thank them for one thing. They didn't have an abortion Because if they had, look what you folks would have missed. Your life would have been empty without, <laughs> without me being around. And, uh, you know, not that far. But you know what happens when this new birth takes place? When somebody comes and asks God's forgiveness of their sins and they're reborn again, the Bible says that there's more rejoicing in heaven over one soul that repenteth than all the others put together, in other words. Now, God is pleased with the service, I believe, that we're having here at Icker Grove this morning. I hope he's pleased with what I'm preaching right now. <clears throat> but you know what? God is not rejoicing over that because God is being blessed by it. But if somebody out of this audience would come today that's walking in the quagmire and the distillment of sin, and they would bow at this old-fashioned altar 